Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Manuel Montrodaso. I'm a geriatrician and clinician scientist at Parwick Hospital, and also professor in the Department of Medicine and Epidemiology and Biostatistics at Western. Today, I would like to present some highlights of our gait and brain health program. I would like to start with some acknowledgements of all the people in my lab, can, but mainly the core members that you can see in this picture that work every day with our participants, with our patients, and also help to do our research. In addition, all the collaborations locally, provincially, nationally, internationally, and at the end, last but not least, all the agencies that you can see here in the right-hand side, they pay the bill of our research. When I think what makes a person look old, two things come to my mind. A slow mobility, a slow gait, but also mental slowing, our cognition is slow. And interestingly, when we come older, those two characteristics not only are very prevalent, but also they are concurrent. They may happen both at the same individual. As we said here in our webpage, our main goal or our mission is to integrate mobility and cognition as a new line of research to better understand and treat the epidemic of insidious disability that is happening in all the people. Those ideas start as early in 2007, when we led a workshop and symposium sponsored by CIHR about how mobility and cognition may interact and create disability. As you can see in this paper published in the Canadian Genetic Journals, you may recognize some names. There are people already working, have worked very intensively in this area in part with hospitals. But importantly, in that workshop, we detect gaps concerning that research, and mainly that the research in mobility and cognition have done in silos. Those researchers or clinicians assessing mobility rarely address cognitive problems, and vice versa. Those researchers and clinicians addressing cognitive issues of dementia rarely address mobility problems. But in the individual patients, both uh, features exist and concur and then interact. How we can understand or rebuild this motor and cognitive interaction or gait and cognitive connection? Well, we use the dual task paradigm. Mainly, we ask people to walk and talk. And you can see in those pictures, in the left-hand side as an individual with some mild cognitive impairment where I ask to walk, to walk just in a corridor. And this gentleman is walking in a mat that can detect the pressure of each footprint and provide a spatial, temporal, and quantitative gait parameters. And as you can see in this individual, his walking is quite normal the symmetry between the foot steps is equal and there is no any path deviation. While the same individual I asked later on to walk and talk, basically to walk and do calculations, serial subtraction by, by seven from 100, you can see that the individual start to slow down, sometimes hesitate to provide the next step and almost have an imbalance or trip situation. And if you compare both walkings, you're going to see that the walking while talking is quite slow. If I take almost one third more time to finish that walking, uh, uh, and when you analyze the footprints in the, in the gate mat that you can see in the, in the upper area, you can see more the asymmetry and the path deviation. In fact, when we analyze the speed, the Single walk, the gentleman walk at 1.5 almost meters per second, but later on when we asked to walk and do the calculation, it slowed down to almost one meter per second. 
Interesting, the asymmetry of the variability increased from almost 3% to 13%. And that difference between the gate speed between <clears throat> walking without talking and walking and talking is the cost. It is the cost our motor performance or gait performance is taking while doing a cognitive demanding challenge, in this case, doing calculations. Um, if we need to put the number, that reduction of cost was around 30%. Normally, older individuals should reduce a little bit your gait speed when trying to do a mental calculation, but should be below 20%. It seems that over 30% is an important predictor as a birth event. In fact, our research and others have confirmed that this increase in the dual task cost is a powerful predictor of future falls, cognitive decline, progressing to dementia, but even mortality. Uh, and we try to see any clinical applicability of this. Here, this is this slide in where we can try to uh, show what is our research. And our research tried to first to develop the understanding between the interaction about mobility, cognition, and mood, but later to apply the understanding. And we have to try to get some knowledge translation in our results. I will show some papers in how we have demonstrated in the past the role of cognitive impairment as a fall risk, particularly led by my former postdoc fellow, Dr. Susan Moyer. Later, we described that those with cognitive impairment, they have any specific changes in the way they walk that we call the motor signature. And that can help us to detect those that can progress to frailty, but also that can progress to dementia. Interestingly, we did some sophisticated analysis using brain imaging scan like MRI and a spectroscopy. And we found that those with gait disturbances that are going to go to dementia has a specific changes in the brain that may justify this motor impairment, and particularly in the primary motor cortex. Uh, in the same venue, we use motor imagery to detect those participants at higher risk to develop decline. But we look for interventions too. So if we can improve cognition, if we can improve some aspect related to memory or executive function, can we improve motor performance? And that's the trial we tried Don Epicil in a phase two clinical trial. And we found that that is feasible to do, showing improvements in executive function in those people at risk. But also we tried some other non-pharmacological interventions in collaboration with Dr. Amer Burham, uh, particularly in a transcranial brain stimulation. In, in, interesting, we try to understand how rehabilitation may occur in people with cognitive impairment and dementia, particularly in our GRU patients. Uh, in the same venue, we try to apply interventions in the community, combining physical exercise and cognitive training to delay the cognitive decline we see in aging. And all this research has had an impact in knowledge translation because we create recommendations, national recommendations on how to use non-cognitive markers related to gait speed, related to behavioral changes, in order to detect those older adults at risk of dementia. And in the same venue, we demonstrate that dual dust gait can be a powerful predictor of dementia in those with mild cognitive impairment. Um, some other papers in the same area but mainly we try to prevent falls in the cognitive impair. And now our lab is leading an international initiative about false international guidance. And these new horizon papers in age and age in 2021 try to summarize our uh, initiative. So concerning the interventional trials, particularly the synergic trials, it's a national collaboration that we led in London, but we have several co-PIs across the country. And we have demonstrated in the synergic trial that the combination of physical exercises with cognitive training in 200 older adults with MCI was having a good efficacy to improve cognitive scores 
in uh, the other skull. The other skull is a composite evaluation of cognition that uh, represents a very good measure of global cognition in all the adults. Now, we have recently got funding from the Western Foundation to apply those lesson learned in Synergy One in a bigger trial that will involve 500 people across the country where we're going to combine not only physical exercise and psychology training, but also we're going to target vascular risk factors, sleep disorders, and um, uh, behavioral changes in order to improve cognition. So uh, just to finish, this synergic to trial is a Canadian representation in the worldwide fingers, which is a global approach to re reduce dementia by prevention led by Miyaki Pivelto, who is the PI of the finger trial. Just to finish, I want to show the digital platform we're going to use to deliver those interventions remotely. We're very excited. We have piloted this kind of intervention, how we can deliver the physical exercise, the cognitive train, vascular risk factor recommendation, sleep and diet control at home. And this is a snapshot of the digital platform. You can see that the individual patient may log in in order to receive the effective coaching and see online the progresses in each domain we're going to target. Just to finish, if you want to learn more about our research also in falls and cognition, you have our book published. Otherwise, I'm very happy to respond to any question you may have. Thank you very much for your attention.